Welcome back to the three months of modal logics, a sequel to the 100 days of logic here at Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at the axiom internalization rule for justification logic. So, as we learned in the last video, any constant specification or a set of axioms and justification constants, which is axiomatically appropriate, all of the axioms are justified at any depth may follow the axiom internalization rule, which states that for any axiom and set of reasons, R1 through Rn, we can conclude that that axiom is justified up to that reason and one further. So any set of reasons that justify an axiom. So let's say we just have two reasons that justify an axiom. So the axiom is justified and that justification for that axiom is itself justified. If we have a constant specification, which is axiomatically appropriate, basically all axioms are justified in any depth, that will mean we can conclude that our doubly justified axiom is in fact triply justified. It's justified at a third level. And then in turn, we can conclude that it's justified at a fourth level, and so on and so forth. We can conclude the axiom is justified up to that reason and one beyond. This may seem complicated, but the simple takeaway from all of this will represent complete logical awareness. Basically, this is going to mean that we have complete logical awareness. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say logical awareness, check out the video a couple videos ago on logical awareness. You are justified in believing an axiom of the system, but also justified in believing that you are justified in believing any axiom of the system, and so on. So any reason will justify the law of non-contradiction, and another reason will justify the claim that you're justified in believing the first reason will justify the law of non-contradiction, and so on and so forth. Basically, all of the axioms are going to be justified infinitely, at any depth, to any degree. Adding this rule to our system J0 will result in system J. Any system now which has more axioms than system J0, but is not fully axiomatically appropriate, like system J will refer, be referred to as JCS or J whatever we name our constant specification where CS is a particular constant specification for that system which is not fully axiomatically appropriate but is not completely empty as in system J0. Now, once again, I'm a skeptic here on the channel. And so we have to do a little bit of defensive skepticism here when we're talking about justification. It may not be clear how counterintuitive this is, but basically what we're doing is stating that assumptions, which is what axioms are, which in principle cannot be justified, are in fact not only justified, but infinitely justified, and infinitely justified by anything at all. This is especially concerning since if someone were, for example, arguing for the axioms of classical logic as opposed to non-classical logic, they would not, as their justification, cite an infinite string of arbitrary justifications, which this rule claims are, in fact, the justification of the laws of logic. Someone who were de defending classical logic wouldn't say, well, clearly all of our axioms of our system are infinitely justified because they're justified by this, they're justified by that. This kind of justification of axioms is completely divorced from any possible idea of justification that anyone else has when we come down to theories of justification. There's no reason you would use an arbitrary infinite string of propositions to claim that the laws of classical logic are in fact true. You would provide some other argument as to perhaps why non-classical logic doesn't map onto reality and classical logic maps onto reality better. You wouldn't say, just because of a bunch of arbitrary reasons that go on forever, clearly it's justified, and infinitely so. The point is that this kind of justification, though we're going to need it to kind of move on in justification logic, is going to be completely different from any actual kind of justification you'll see for propositions that can be justified, as opposed to propositions that in principle cannot be. Once again, if you want more information on this, check out Piro and the Academics. I'll talk a little bit more about Agrippa's trilemma and some of the problems for justification there. Up next, we're going to be moving on and looking at Axiom D and System JD in justification logic. 
Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.